it's sunday so it's time to take a look at the polka markets to see how they've been doing i mean it's not looking great it is another one of those nasty sundays but then when isn't it right it's very hard to get a green sunday nowadays especially in these market conditions so let's kick things off with kusama first uh kusama just had a dump just before i decided to record this video we just uh, we can see it took a huge dump here it was okay it's around 34.80 uh, but then it just decided you know what i'm not having it boom i think this is a validator maybe selling you know very likely a validator because it, it dropped quite a lot i mean it dropped probably over 2000 ksm in a sale here so quite a lot of ksm was sold here i'm assuming a validator has accumulated a lot of rewards and just wanted to get out to cover their costs right it could just be a holder as well you never really know with these things but uh yeah we're definitely not looking good here with kusama it's on a constant downtrend here ever since we had uh, that nice recovery after the initial pop because with every falling knife you get a recovery like this it's usually bots buying back it's not necessarily people it might be traders too but it's mostly bots uh, which is the normal market reaction here and then just a continuation downtrend here under the 200 day moving average which is this uh, purple line that i've left here just to show you uh, it's it's not looking great like over here we were doing okay-ish it was looking bullish once again although not really bullish because we had this dump uh, where we drop below and then the 200 day moving average was just waiting 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 you know accumulating here uh, but um, we were holding okay around this i mean look look how nice we're swinging on this 200 day we we're bouncing right off the 200 day moving average line here so it was looking good it's just unfortunate because there wasn't enough buying pressure here to take this higher there was literally no reason to buy ksm at that point and that's why we had the dump here of course with the market as well so as it stands there's no reason to have ksm right now simply because of the lack of crowd loans and the staking rewards have gone down as well so that's why people are selling i mean this is the reality that we have to face here is that there is no legitimate reason to hold it because the the idea of parity is to focus on mostly on polkadot i mean they are going to launch the common good parity chains on polkadot which means it's going to create more utility for dot now aside from this we also had the fud well i wouldn't say fud but people considered it as fud which was the announcement from gavin wood i mean you don't really know what happened sure gavin is, is a techie person at heart and he wants to become an, uh, a chief architect and to to oversee the technical aspect right but you don't really know what happened deep down inside like why did gavin wood decide to do this right now in this bear market does he really not care about the bear market really does he really not care about price at all i mean he claims not to but do we really know the truth here nobody really knows so no matter what you think it's you never really know, really know what's inside the man's head and at the end of the day you don't know what's what's going on in his family maybe there's a legit reason as to why he decided to do it and he just used the words to say i'm taking at heart and i want to be the chief architect for the public but the reality could be different so yeah that definitely had an impact i mean when when a ceo steps down especially in a bear market it's gonna have an impact no matter how you look at it we've seen projects before in crypto where ceo stepped down and it had an impact on the on the price of course so it is a shame i don't know if we're gonna see 50 something bucks anytime soon sure whenever the market will recover but there are talks of some bright times ahead and that's to do with the inflation uh, hike on um, announced by the fed i think it's due to happen sometime in november but i don't know exactly when this is in the us of course uh, so we don't know how that's gonna how that's gonna impact the market but traders are saying that that's gonna be bullish for the market because there's gonna be an inflation hike and so there's a good chance they were gonna see the market recover and of course everyone's gonna be happy if that would be the case because let's face it we all want the market to just recover already right uh, we don't want a two-year-long bear market we don't know it till mid 2024 for this market to recover post bitcoin halving uh, which might not even happen then to be honest you know because of the world situation but we just want this whole thing to recover so hopefully november will bring us some good news some people are saying it's going to have a, a bit of a delay effect so it's going to be in december even if we're going to get the news in november but we'll see anyway uh yeah kusama's not looking pretty at all right now it's also going to face some resistance around 3650 as you can see here because of this area here uh also 3750 because of this area here and then a whole ton of resistance around 40 bucks because it's been accumulating nicely here and now it's going to encounter that as resistance 
Let's move on and talk about DOT. DOT has faced exactly the same fate as KSM. It's down quite significantly ever since the announcement uh, from Gavin Wood. As you can see here, when we had the crash, we were holding OK around 622 and then boom, straight down where we encountered support, same area as here. Now it's gonna be a struggle for us to go back up to six bucks because we've got a ton of resistance formed here due to all this accumulation. So yeah, I mean, things are looking nastier and nastier and I can see why people are just shorting, 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 and you get the short traders constantly pushing the price down. They're making profit of this because they're not using the real dot at the end of the day. It's fictional dot. They just think the market is gonna go down. So they're shorting because in crypto you can short without owning any asset, right? You just start shorting, shorting, and that's it. And uh, you're making profit of that. Next, let's talk about Near here. So uh, Near is losing the uptrend, unfortunately. As you can see, we were doing so well here, and I was really happy to see this, especially with the land sales. I mean, looking at the chart at that time, look at this. I mean, when we had this, it was very clear that we're in an uptrend. And we expected the direction, direction to eventually change, but I just didn't know exactly when. But we had this sharp drop here. Uh, I think it was just people that were on staking and decided to dump. Whoever pumped this decided to dump because it's pretty obvious here that these aren't just the normal holders. Whoever decided to pump it just said, you know what, we didn't attract enough buyers. So let's just offload this. So it feels to me like there were some market makers or pump and dump group involved here. Although it is a bit odd because it looks like they bought in different over a, a, a longer period of time here. I mean, it started on the 12th of September and it ended on the 9th of October. So it might not necessarily have been a pump and up group. It could just be the market fluctuating because there was enough demand because people wanted to buy enough for the land sale and then boom, crashed, right? So we had this nice sell off here. Well, nasty sell off, I should say. And then the 200 day moving average dropped a lot as well. We broke above that 200 day moving average again. This is usually the effect you get after a massive dump like that. Uh, we went nicely here to 48 cents. This is exactly when they announced the land sales. Uh, so it happened here on the 18th. Uh, we had the land sale day and uh, then the price crashed. And then this Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, so in two days from now, we're going to have another land sale event and another auction is going to kick off because the week is going to be over. So remember every week for five weeks we're going to get these land sales and auctions so i i don't know if we're going to see another push to the upside here because the last time that we had this uh what was it so 16th was monday no 17th was monday 16th was sunday so as you can see on the 16th between the 15th and the 16th so saturday to sunday we're already pushing up here whereas now we're in a situation where it's not looking like we want to go higher here we are actually going down by the looks of it we are just at support here. We're holding at support, just barely holding, as you can see this area here. But uh, yeah, and, and it's thanks to this area of previous resistance that we're holding. Now, the next area where we could get to is 35 cents, unfortunately, which is this area here and this area here. And then if we lose that, the next one is not till around 30 cents. So let's hope we don't see that. Let's really hope we don't see that. Let's hope the sellers are out and uh, we're going to accumulate for a while. But... I, it's not looking bullish. I mean, unless something's going to happen tomorrow and unless the BitCountry team announce something bullish to trigger another price hike here, we may not see the next spike on Tuesday, unfortunately, right? Just the way it looks here. I don't like the look of this chart and it's, we're not prepared. We're not in position for another spike up here. Here, we are positioned really well. I mean, anyone who made a trade entry here around 40 cents, I mean, it was very clear here that we're positioned to go up. There was no guarantee, of course. Uh, but I mean, looking at this formation here of head and shoulders, we were out of that formation and then we started to push up. So it was pretty obvious here that we were moving up considering the upcoming news, considering the market condition at the time. We were, we were in a good position here for a short term trade here that was profitable. But now we're not in a good position because we're not seeing a turnaround. So for me personally, I'm more inclined to think a dump is going to come than a recovery. Let's just hope I'm wrong and we will be seeing a recovery. Uh, let's look at Mover here, Mover 1042. Now, remember I told you that Mover gets one of these price spikes every once in a while. It's a week up or a week down. We had a week down here. We had a week up. We had two weeks up here, one here, one here on the 18th. And then we had another one recently, uh, which was actually today or yesterday. Sorry, we had one yesterday. 
Uh, it wasn't that big. It went to 1149, but considering we're around 1030, I mean, that's still something. It's over a dollar. So for a quick trade here, that would be good. And I think we're going to get more of these. There's no doubt about it. We are going to get another week down as well. For me personally, if I was to flip this, uh, I would probably place a buy order around 970 to 980. And then look to flip it at maybe 1130, 1140, because I'm concerned that if we're going to drop down here, I want to have enough room to, you know, to not be down a lot so that when the next week comes, I have a good exit chance, right? Because if I if I put an order here on 1020, for example, and it's very likely going to fill because it is 1040 right now, then what if we dump lower and then we get a week to like 1050, then I may not be able to exit my position. So that's how I would be looking at 970 here because I'd feel more comfortable in that area to be able to exit around 1030 to 1040, right? For a nice percentage gain. And this is of course for a quick flip. And uh, yeah, sure, we may get another one of these massive catalysts here, which will take us two or three dollars up. But uh, the probability of that happening is slimmer than one of these small wicks, which happen quite often, as you can see, quite a number of times per month here. We had this on the 15th, we had this on the 18th, and we had this on the 22nd. So they seem to happen quite often. And so I can expect another one of these to happen before the end of the month, judging by how they work. Uh, we've had some months where we didn't get that many, but I mean here in, at the end of September we had one, two, and then we had this massive one in early October. So yeah, as you can see, we're, we, we're looking very likely to get another one of these for sure. Uh, looking at Glimmer. Glimmer is not doing great either. 45 cents in 20 days time we are going to get a massive unlock of around 20 million Glimmer coins which is why I'm very wary right now. I would be more inclined to short it than to actually buy. And I would be more inclined to wait to see what happens and see how low can it actually go before making an entry. Uh, we had a nice pop here to 55 cents, as you can see. We are getting the odd week here with Glimmer as well, but they're not the same level as the ones on Mover. I mean, they are much smaller, as you can see, in terms of percentage, mostly because the supply is also greater. And uh, don't forget that crowd loan contributors are still getting their unlocks until October of next year. And so expect more uh, dumping to happen because people are going to sell. They are going to sell for whatever reason, right? Personal reasons, whatever, financial situations. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, what do we have here? 47 cents. We have some resistance around 47 cents here. This one and this one. And uh, we've got more around 50 cents as well. So there's a ton of resistance here that we have to break past in order to uh, to move back up. And hence why we're getting these massive weeks and then we're dumping down because we are breaking above that resistance, but there isn't enough buying pressure to sustain it. Let's move on and talk about AUSD. It's not looking good. It's on a dump as we're speaking, 55 cents here absolutely destroyed it's getting to 50 percent the value that it should have had so much for the pegging they might as well change this to half a dollar peg guaranteed guys <laughs> so yeah 55 cents for AUSD we've had another one of these dumps way back here remember when we had that massive dump but then after that we had two more dumps to 55 cents as you can see we had this one here on uh, when, when was this this was on the 24th of August and then this one here on the 30th of August. And since then, the team hasn't done anything to bring the pegging back. And so the this was the, uh, the what you call it? People are gambling here, or they're speculating. People are speculating that the, the pegging is going to be back. And I mean, I was convinced that the pegging is going to be back as well. I was pretty convinced. I mean, judging by the article that Betty wrote, it looked pretty good. But if they couldn't come to an agreement with Qcoin, Things are not going to work out, right? And then hence why we're seeing the dump. I mean, people are just losing hope now. And uh, we are seeing that dump. So 55 cents, really, really nasty. Now, if you have insider news and you are part of the team or whatever, or you're friends with somebody from the team and you're 100% sure that the pegging is going to be recovering and you're making this entry now, it's absolutely amazing. For, it's it's going to work out amazing for you, right? Because you are sure that you're going to get this really, really nice gain. But for me, who has no idea what's going on inside the team, and if they are going to work things out with Qcoin and bring the pegging back, this is a huge risk to me. So right now, as it stands, I would be afraid to get in here. Now, financial advice. Uh, let's move on and talk about the next one here, KMA. I can't actually add more on Qcoin for some reason here, uh, more tabs. 
because the previous tabs disappear there's only a limited amount you can add and then the last ones disappear uh, so let's look at KMA here so KMA is doing exactly the same as Nier was doing at the beginning this is mostly because of staking and also because Kenny is attending all these events spreading the word about KMA more people are learning about calamari now so that's part of the reason again the price is still super low compared to what it used to be if you think about it but I mean anyone who accumulated around here uh, like not point not not one six I mean you're doing really well right now you can sit comfortable and you can stake and you can sell those staking rewards for a nice 170 percent apy and still do well right so yeah that's the situation we're in right now with kma uh, we had these mass massive spikes here but it's because of the uptrend the trend has changed as you can see they are right in this 200 day moving average right above it we didn't even touch it here on the pullback and now we're just moving back up again so i'm expecting another pop to the upside and then eventually unless unless something's going to happen with the product for them to launch it for example if they delay the launch again the calamari pay mary pay which is the dap or mary swap if they delay the the, the launch for those daps then we can expect the price to start crashing of course and the trend is going to change again just like we've seen with near from bitcountry pioneer but if they deliver and if the delivery is going to be awesome and if Kenny can keep up the momentum, then I can I can see this continue to go up because it's still like the, the market cap is super low right now. And I can see this continue to head higher, probably to half a cent, I'd say, because we did hit almost half a cent at some point a few months ago. So I, I'm expecting that to continue as long as there's delivery, of course, and as long as the APY holds high, because there is a good incentive to actually stake right now i mean normally i wouldn't say staking is great because you're talking about 10 to 15 percent apy but then you're facing a lot of selling pressure so your your main bag is losing a lot of value for the little gain you're getting for staking which you may not find good worth it right but in this case i mean the price is continuing to go up the apy is high so there is incentive to actually stake okay and uh, that's that's the reason I'm, I'm trying to say this to you that it is doing okay now it is on the uptrend but anything can happen we could see some bad news and it could just change the trend just like that but if we assume that kenny is going to deliver then things are going to be fine my other concern though is with the manta network crowd loan launch when they're going to launch that manta network crowd loan you can expect the price to plunge and why do i say that well because we have seen the majority of the parachain teams switch their focus and give their full attention to the primary parachain which is the one on polkadot and kind of abandon the one on kusama kind of you know uh, use it for upgrades use it for the for for deployments but not not for delivery of the product this is my concern okay and i have a feeling the same is going to happen with calamari right now the full focus is on calamari but once they've got manta out there I fear that things are going to happen to to KMA and I don't see a bright future in that sense so that's why I think that teams should come up to some agreement and do something about this two token model because it just doesn't seem to work well I mean you can't focus on two horses if you only think that one horse is going to win the race you know that uh, connotation so yeah uh, to me personally i don't want to fud anyone here but we have to see this from a realistic point of view and I, I always use the realistic point of view even as a bag holder even if you think i'm fudding my own bags that's okay i mean i just want to be realistic with you and tell you how it is the teams are not going to focus on two projects at the same time to give them the full attention that they deserve for example if somebody wants to develop a dap and they decide to choose manta kenny is not going to tell them hey we've got calamari do you want to deploy there first maybe and check out calamari no welcome come to manta please deploy all you want so in cases like these you're gonna see that you know the the the, the focus is gonna wear off you're no longer gonna see love on the canary side and that's that's my point right we should see that single coin on both the canary and the main and then in that case you're gonna be happy you're, you can sleep well at night because you don't have to worry about the canary being abandoned because even if it does get abandoned you still have the main product right on polka dot so i think that we need to do something about that and 
the power chain teams need to do something about that. Otherwise, things are not going to work well in the long term. Like we've seen with Mover and Glimmer, the main focus is now on Moonbeam because a lot of the DAPs want to build it there. Not so many are going to Moon River anymore. So that's that's the fact. Uh, next, let's look at uh, Akala as well. ACA, let's see how they've been doing. Now there's a big unlock happening, just to, to make you aware here. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is due to happen in about nine days. I think it's in around nine days, uh, but not 100% sure. I think I'm gonna have to do another video once I get that information. But uh, yeah, in about nine days, we should see another unlock of uh, AC coins. And every time we get these unlocks, which are quite aggressive, the private investors end up selling. And that's where we're seeing the price crash. And I mean, look at this nice pop that we had here on the 16th of October, where it went to 23 cents only to crash all the way down. So people were desperately waiting to get the heck out. And this doesn't inspire me any trust. I mean, this looks like it was done on purpose. Market makers, whatever, pump and dump group. I mean, it looks pretty obvious here. It looks like a pump and dump, right? Just boom, 23 cents down again, 16 cents right where it started. So it's got the pump and dump look. Um, so yeah, it's not looking good here for ACA with all these aggressive unlocks. Things are just going downhill consistently. The Akala team are not as active on Twitter as they used to be. And so because of this lack of communication, things are not going doing great for the price, right? So that's, that's the reality of it. And coupled that with the bear market, what can you expect, right? uh yeah i mean this is it i don't think there's anything else that i need to cover i think i've covered everything uh let me think let me think uh no i think this is it oh no there is one more there is one more i almost forgot fala let's take a look at fala because uh fala had a lot of great news with the fat contract launch and we had a massive pump here 50 cents 40 47.8 cents or whatever it was massive pullback here to 20 cents so 50 percent over 50 percent drop here which is absolutely insane people are waiting to dump this like crazy another pop here to 32 and now we are going just below this 200 day moving average which is not great but it is a delayed indicator so i mean it's only acting with the price but we've gone below it so to me even with the bullish news from Fala, we are at resist. We are at support now. The previous resistance that we had with the first pop to 20 cents. But I mean, once it breaks this, because it is pretty thin, you can expect. What can you expect here? I think you can expect 10 cents easily. Uh, let's see. 10 cents, I think, is is fair to say. Yeah, we've got a lot of support around 10 cents. So uh, yeah, 10 cents. Absolutely. I mean, if if we lose this. And it's not looking good because we have been dumping. It needs some catalyst here and I'm just not seeing the catalyst anymore. The announcement was made. People bought the news, pumped it, dumped it. And now there's nothing. Now it's just developing, developing, developing. Back to everyday working day. So, you know, nothing wow anymore. So unless the team can do something to create some more hype, because you do need hype right at the end of the day in the crypto market, then I'm expecting 10 cents here. Not to FUD, but this is the reality because this is the next area of support that we've got. It's a, it's a free fall until there. So yeah, just be careful here. Not financial advice, but be careful if you are planning to FOMO into FALA. Think again, because it could happen and it could destroy you, right? Because nobody wants to lose that much more. Nobody wants to see 50% of their back drop like that. It's, it's really painful to watch, especially in a bear market, which has already damaged a lot of people. So yeah, that's it from today's Polka Markets video. It was quite a long one, longer than usual because I've had a lot to say, but thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next Polka Markets video next Sunday. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.